There are five things that make this what some coaches would call perfect running form. In this video, we're going to break down each of these five areas and talk about how you can train to add some drills to improve your running form and make it look a lot smoother. And make sure you stick around till the end because number five might surprise you. The first aspect of running form that we want to talk about is actually your upper body and this often goes overlooked. If we look closely, what you'll notice about Kipchoge's running form is that his arms are up fairly high and they're almost like a chicken wing. The arms aren't driving far forward like you see a lot of recreational runners doing it, trying to add to their stride. Instead, the elbows are driving back and they're carried very close to the chest. This is a really efficient upper body running technique. This is important because your arm swing is directly related to how you strike the ground. If you have a really long arm swing and you're reaching your elbows forward, chances are you're also gonna be over striding on the opposite side. There are two things that you can work on to improve your arm swing and make your running more efficient. Number one is running with a loose grip like you're holding potato chips. This will help keep your shoulders relaxed. And then number two is focusing on driving your elbow back rather than forward. This may be a little bit counterintuitive because you want that powerful arm swing, but driving your elbow back is gonna help keep your chest tall and help you strike with your foot underneath your center of mass and lead to more efficient running. All right, the second aspect of running form that we wanna take a look at is your torso lean. This is something that a lot of runners are initially coached on is to lean forward, but oftentimes this is done incorrectly by leaning at the hips rather than leaning the whole torso forward. The key to good running form is to have your whole torso lean forward so your shoulders, hips, and feet are in line. What you can see is with that forward lean, Kipchoge still keeps his chest tall. This is different than hinging at the hips and collapsing your chest forward and also pushing your head forward, all of which can reduce the efficiency of your running. So make sure whenever you're incorporating forward torso lean that you're doing so with your whole body and not just hinging forward at your hips. The third element of efficient running technique that we want to look at is what's going on at the hips. And what we want to see is the ability to actually extend the hip fully at toe off. There are two different places that you can get extension from when you're running, your lower back or your hip. All runners are going to get extension from a combination of both, but if we really lack hip extension, we're going to have to get excessive extension in the back, which can lead to some irritation and back pain over time. Also, we need to have strength through the anterior chain and the core, so that way when we are going into that hip extension, we can control those eccentric forces and start that knee drive efficiently. If we can be smooth in the way that we're storing and releasing energy through that hip extension, then we can run more efficiently. One drill to work on this is doing a plank position leg raise. From this plank position, we wanna hold our anterior core tight in a nice strong plank position like a surfboard, squeeze the glutes, and lift one heel up. We wanna make sure that we're doing this by extending at the hip, not extending at the lower back. Work on this drill for 30 to 60 seconds for three sets. All right, with point number four, we're gonna to get to the really important parts of an efficient gait cycle, specifically how we're contacting the ground. We're gonna look at the knee first. And what you can see in this clip is that the contact with the ground occurs when the knee is over top of the ankle. This means that we don't have what we would consider a high shank angle with the foot and the toes up in the air. Instead, the foot is fairly close to flat on ground contact and the knee is over the ankle. This leads to very low braking forces. By contrast, a lot of recreational runners overstride and reach forward and their knee is behind their ankle on initial contact. One of the best ways that I've found to improve the way that you're striking the ground is to address your tempo or your cadence. Cadence is the number of steps you're taking per minute. Often we see recreational runners around 150, maybe 155 steps per minute. Increasing that cadence by around five to 10 steps per minute can often significantly reduce overstriding. When you have to take more steps, you naturally can contact a little bit closer to underneath your center of mass. If you wanna address your tempo, start by just counting your number of steps in one minute, and then go ahead and try to increase that by about five by going to Spotify and searching 160 or 165 steps per minute as a metronome or a playlist. All right, and then efficient running technique point number five, which may surprise you, is pronation. 
and pronation is what occurs at the ankle and this is actually a part of good running technique. It is very common to see elite runners who significantly pronate at their ankles. That's because pronation is an essential energy storage mechanism of the foot. This study, for example, found that efficient use of the biological spring mechanism of the foot can reduce the metabolic cost of running by about 17% per stride. This means that as the arch collapses, we store energy that we can use in the gait cycle. This is often something that runners need to work on is actually improving their ability to pronate the foot and store energy during the gait cycle. Runners with a stiff high arch often struggle with efficient running mechanics because they don't have this pronation mechanism. If that's the case for you, then you could try this single leg hop drill and work on collapsing the arch. And if you need further help with improving pronation, you could try this wedge drill. This wedge drill involves putting a wedge underneath the lateral heel and the big toe. So believe it or not, improving the way you pronate your foot can actually make you a more efficient runner. I do have to give credit to Carmen, our gait analysis specialist for this wedge drill. I'll put a link in the description below to his information if you're looking for a gait analysis or to improve the way that you run and your lower limb interacts with the ground during running. All right, hopefully these technique points helped you improve your running. If it did, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.